a doctor and award-winning former New York Times reporter, is breaking down the three trillion, that's with a T, trillion dollar health care system and calling it dysfunctional. It's all in her new book. It's an American sickness. ABC's Lindsay Janice is here. It has a closer look at how it's affecting Americans. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, Robin. Author Elizabeth Rosenthal argues our health system has been hijacked by greed. She says with most of us paying more than ever for our health insurance, it is time for patients to rise up and demand affordable care. We met one woman who was forced to do just that. On Christmas Day 2013, a normally healthy Wanda Wickheiser ended up in the ER after a series of debilitating headaches and vomiting. A blood vessel in her brain burst and treatment required a medevac and 15 days in the hospital. But she says the worst pain came later. The bills started coming in and you would open them and it was just like unbelievable. I mean, the helicopter was $50,000. After the death of her husband, she lost her health insurance. And while working part-time to raise two kids, she couldn't afford insurance, so she went without. The cost to save her life on Christmas Day? Nearly $500,000. I cried a lot. I couldn't pay all these bills, and they kept saying, well, you have to. Author Elizabeth Rosenthal, a former New York Times reporter and doctor, says extraordinary costs like this are proof American health care has been hijacked. You're both a patient to the good guys and an ATM machine to the bad guys. But she says medical professionals aren't the only ones to blame. Patients don't speak up, don't assert their needs. Patients have been complacent. What can patients start doing right away? Every patient should know you have power, you have control. Don't just write a check. She says before any treatment, ask your doctor how much it will cost. If x-rays or blood tests are required, demand your doctor use in-network facilities. Also, always ask for an itemized bill. If you feel the charges are too high, negotiate. Wanda's fight to contest exorbitant medical bills took more than two years. But thanks to her persistence and health care advocates fighting alongside her, she finally reached an undisclosed settlement with the providers. I just wanted to pay what was fair. Now, when it comes to negotiating medical bills, Rosenthal says do your homework by researching what is deemed a fair cost for the treatment or procedure that you had by using websites like Healthcare Blue Book and clearhealthcost.com. She says when negotiating, it is important to write letters. Don't just call. You need a paper trail. She's written some templates for protest letters. They are on our website. You can check out all those resources at goodmorningamerica.com on Yahoo. Robin? Yeah, that paper trail is key, Lindsay. You're right about that. We're joined now by our senior medical contributor, Dr. Jen Ashton. You have a very busy practice. How much power does a patient have? More than they think, but sadly still not enough, because the reality is the world of medical billing is literally like a foreign language. So patients are going to be unfamiliar with that. And sadly, most doctors are not really going to be making those final billing decisions. And there's a host of other problems. To name a few, of course, patients don't ask enough questions. So an inspired, enlightened, empowered, educated patient is always ideal. Doctors, sadly, don't have a lot of the financial answers. Mm -hmm. And again, the care we give to to patients without insurance drives up the cost in part for everyone else. So this is a very complex situation. So break down the larger costs for us. Okay, so if you look at the pie chart here mm -hmm. with that $3 trillion budget, take a look at these numbers. Let's start with doctor bills that according to this book represent 25% of our budget. You have to ask if you have insurance, how much will this count towards my deductible? If you're paying out of pocket, you are entitled to those numbers before you step foot in that doctor's office. But don't ask the person making your appointment. Ask for the billing manager mm -hmm. or the practice administrator. Then if you go to hospital bills, 45% of our annual budget. The key thing in the book, mm -hmm. you want to ask if you have someone in the hospital, are they admitted under observation, which is different than being admitted fully. Hospitals can keep you for two nights, three days right. under observation. You actually count as an outpatient if you're under observation, which can cost more, and you may be responsible for those fees. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Then if you go down to drugs and devices, 15% of our budget, again, with drugs, ask your doctor when they're writing that prescription, is it generic? Okay, sometimes the answer is going to be 
CVS sometimes know and shop around pharmacy to pharmacy. This is so important. My mom just went to get her statin filled. Mm -hmm. There was almost a $300 difference mm. between pharmacies that were less than five minutes apart. So that's really important. And then finally, tests. You know, we are we are love to order diagnostic tests. This, according to the book, represents about 15% of our annual budget. You want to ask your doctor, what is she going to do with the results of that test before they order it? Don't just do a test because you can. What else should be considered here? Because I know some people are thinking, wait a minute, I see where some um, hospital CEOs and insurance CEOs are making million dollar salaries here. That's right. And look, you know, people, we have a, a big problem here in our healthcare system, obviously. Patients need to step up, as we've heard in right. this book, which I think is an excellent book. But so do doctors, because in medical school, we are taught literally nothing about the finances of health care. So we need to educate ourselves, okay. not just about health care, but about mm -hmm. the finances. And lastly, we have, I think, one of the best health care systems in the world, but it needs resuscitation. Yeah. We have brilliant doctors, mm -hmm. but we need help. That's a good point. All right, Jen, thank you very much. You and American Sickness is available tomorrow.